My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather here today, let us reflect on the words of 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Living for God is a fight. It is a daily battle against the forces of darkness that seek to bring us down and separate us from God. And when we are told to fight the good fight of faith, it means that there is opposition, conflict, and resistance that we need to overcome. So what are these opposing sides at war with each other? Galatians 5 verse 17 tells us, For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. As believers, there is a constant battle between our sinful nature and the Spirit of God within us. There is a fight between our will and God's will, between our pride and selfishness versus obedience to God's Word. This battle is ongoing, and it can be difficult to stay the course. But take heart, for we have been called to fight the good fight of faith. We are not alone in this battle, for God is with us every step of the way. He has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the desires of our sinful nature and to live in accordance with His will. So let us take hold of the eternal life to which we have been called. Let us make our good confession in the presence of many witnesses, and let us fight the good fight of faith with all our might. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we continue to reflect on the words of 1 Timothy 6 verse 12 and the example of Jesus Christ, let us focus on how we can follow his example and live for God. Jesus Christ is our ultimate example of how to live and die in faith. He did not live his life according to his own wishes or desires, but rather, he lived for God. As it says in John 5, Jesus did not do anything purely on his own, but rather, he was given all judgment by the Father for the express purpose of doing what the Father does. In other words, Jesus did not follow his own agenda, but rather, he followed his Father's agenda. He did not seek his own glory or honor, but rather, he sought to glorify his Father in everything that he did. So what does this mean for us? How can we follow Jesus' example and live for God? First and foremost, we must submit our will to God's will. We must seek to do what He wants us to do, rather than what we want to do. As it says in Matthew 6 verse 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We must seek to do God's will on earth, just as it is done in heaven. We must also seek to glorify God in everything that we do. As it says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. We must seek to glorify God in every aspect of our lives, whether it is in our work, our relationships, or our daily routines. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us follow the example of Jesus Christ and live for God. Let us submit our will to His will and seek to glorify Him in everything that we do. For as it says in Philippians 2 verse 13, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. As Jesus said in Mark 12 verses 30 to 31, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Loving our Lord God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, exemplify our faith. These are simple yet difficult commands to follow, and it is a fight to love our neighbors all the time. There will be times when our neighbors will betray our trust or turn their back on us, but we still have to love them. Likewise, it is a fight to spend time in God's word, pray consistently, and chase holiness because we have to contend with our own sinful nature. But this is the good fight of faith. This is what the fight is all about. 
So my dear friends, let me encourage you today to keep on fighting. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Let us continue to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Let us keep spending time in God's word, praying consistently, and pursuing holiness. And let us remember that God is with us in this fight, and he will help us overcome our sinful nature and love our neighbors as ourselves. Let us remember the words of 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. May God bless us all as we continue to fight the good fight of faith. Now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts, grateful for the gift of faith and the calling to fight the good fight of faith. We thank you for sending your Son Jesus Christ to be our ultimate example of how to live and die in faith. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who empowers us to fight the good fight and helps us to love you and our neighbors. Lord, we recognize that fighting the good fight of faith is not an easy task. We are constantly battling our own sinful nature, contending with opposition and conflict, and striving to love our neighbors as ourselves. We need your strength and guidance in this fight, Lord. We need your grace and mercy to sustain us and help us overcome the challenges we face. We ask that you help us to follow Jesus' example of living for you and not for ourselves. Help us to put aside our own agendas and desires and follow your will for our lives. Give us the courage to say not my will, but yours be done and to trust that you know what is best for us. We also ask that you help us to love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. We want to pursue a deeper relationship with you, Lord, and spend more time in your word and in prayer. We want to know you more intimately and be transformed by your love and grace. Help us to prioritize our relationship with you and make time for you every day. Lord, we also ask that you help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. We know that this is not always an easy task, especially when we are hurt or betrayed by those around us. But we also know that you call us to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. Help us to extend grace and forgiveness to those who have wronged us and to show love and compassion to those around us who are in need. Finally, we ask that you give us the strength and endurance to keep fighting the good fight of faith. We know that there will be times when we are tired, discouraged, or overwhelmed. But we also know that you are with us in this fight, and that you will never leave us or forsake us. Help us to persevere, to press on, and to take hold of the eternal life to which you have called us. Lord, we pray that you would continue to strengthen us in our faith and in our fight. We thank you for the gift of salvation and for the hope of eternal life that we have in Jesus Christ. Help us to live for you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Thank mm-hmm. you.